All right, so here we are, and just with a brief explanation before I get started, uh, we're following a tip from Hot Wheels Restoration and Customization Wizard Bare Metal HW, and I'm going to try using what is this? What I'm going to be trying to use acetone. To open a blister card without it destroying the blister blister or the packaging um, and his specific tip was in relation to how to uh, counterfeit an error card for Hot Wheels um, and I believe the examples he was working with were, were brand new uh, packages. This has existed since uh, 1970. It's obviously the Apollo Moon Exploring Set 304D, as in David, not B, as in boy. Been saying it wrong for a couple of years. Here's the 1970 date, right there on the corner, even. Um, and I, th I've chosen this of, of two identical sets that I got to open. Um, but I want to remove it in a way that preserves the packaging so that after I'm done or between uses of, of, of uh, use, utilizing the pieces in diorama works, it can go back into the package and then go back up on the wall of still sealed mint on card stuff that I keep in my room. And, and, and hopefully it will be a method that I can use to open some of them and use them and keep them in what would appear to be a, a new condition or a still sealed condition and trust me none of these are going to be for sale i'm not selling my my space toys this is just for me to continue being a little bit of a nerd about keeping the packaging sealed and the tip that he gave was to use a brush and apply acetone to the back of the uh, package to weaken the bond between the glue and the blister plastic. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the cap back on it and show that this is 100% uh, acetone that came from Walgreens, $4. And just using any old brush that happened to be handy here at my studio. And this will all evaporate um, perfectly, and it shouldn't uh, stain or damage the inking, although it's so old that I, I, I think all bets are off on that. And I'm, I'm, I'm utilizing this as an opportunity to see if the method is going to work on, on the really old uh, vintage packaging. And yeah. well, looks like it'll be acceptable. And all I want to do right now is shake the pieces out. You mean my golden astronaut? Yes, we're out. And that's still that's still acceptable for my oval wall to hang there. And 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 the the, the follow-up tip is that you use a hair dryer to warm the uh, plastic just enough for the glue to rebond. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't the plastic wasn't sliced and that it wasn't completely ripped. Um, and we'll set this off to the side and instead check out what came in the set. Standout piece is the Major Matt Mason. I've been referring to this as a laser cannon. It's actually a rocket launching slug. I can't do anything right. And it's got an interestingly uh, unique astronaut on it. These pieces were all likely made by LP Toys of Hong Kong who did the uh, astronaut figures for 
the Triang, SpaceX, and Golden Astronaut ranges of toys. So there's another one for my collection. And of equal interest is this marvelous Apollo Command Service Module. Marked Made in Hong Kong on the side. Um, there's, there's a notch for a stand, but they don't give you a stand with it. And I've got a matching uh, gilded or chromed um, lunar module that in another Apollo and Exploring set that it may or may not be matched with for work. And then here's the uh, checker label rocket. I'm not sure what else to call it. And I'm turning it over right now looking for uh, a little bit of script. Let's try a light. A little bit of a script up the side of the rocket on the later copies that says made in Hong Kong and I'm not seeing it although I'm pretty sure that the shape of the rocket the pods at the end of, the, of those wings there is, is incorrect for an original. The original shouldn't have so pronounced a point on the ends of the pods but there you go there's your 39 cent Apollo Moon Exploring toy set and as the Triang SpaceX website points out, there's more toys there for your meager uh, cost than you'd get with the Golden Astronaut range. So these, these, these were a definite uh, competitor to those. And the irony is, is that they were made by the same company that was making the uh, Golden Astronaut and Astronauts. But we opened it. That was successful. A little bit of acetone and a brush. Yeah, you know, there, there, there's some, there, there's a line there that, 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 that's too bad, but it's, it's 50 year old inking. It's not a brand new piece. And the important thing is that I didn't have to cut or rip. And, uh, the back had already looked like it had been used as a sponge, which is a term we, we, we came up with at the Rhino Records in the Albany, New York to describe used product that we would take, which maybe had some indication of water damage on it, specifically LP Records uh, back in, in the era, oh, when was I working in 1995, 1996, summer of 95, I think was when I worked there. And if we took in a, a, a record LP that had indication of water damage, we would just make note on the check-in slot that it, or page that it appeared to have been used as a sponge. But I got me a Major Matt Mason rocket launching sled from Apollo Moon Exploring, set number 304B. And I'm going to make some art with it. Catch you later.